Hey everyone, it's Greg, and welcome to another Dice Throne Talk. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Dice Throne Adventures and the rulebook they posted last month in August. And I'm just going to go a little bit about it. I'm not going to go in great depth over it. I encourage you to check it out. You can view it uh, if you go to the Dice Throne Community Facebook page. Uh, they posted I think Nate posted it. Uh, you can check it out. It is a living document. So they have updated even since they have posted it. Uh, they saw a couple or the community saw a couple things that needed to get changed and they were able to change that right away. So this is the most updated version they have right now. Um, so we'll get right into it here a little bit. And we're just going to go for the components for right now. I'm trying something out a little different here. Uh, so the last couple times I'm just having a view of the Dice Throne box. This time what I'm doing obviously is using my iPad here and I'm going to try out this way so let me know what you think of using this. So components wise, really awesome components and the trays to hold all the components, really excited for it. Um, if you haven't looked already, check out the open uh, box openings for Dice Zone Adventures. Uh, they put out there a little while back uh, when they first got it in. Looks fantastic, really happy about it. So let's just go over a little bit uh, what's coming in this box overall. Uh, so you have your scenario cards. Uh, you have four level one, three, and five, and seven per one boss and one per boss. So it's going to keep it a little um, versatile of what kind of scenarios you're going to be receiving. You have a two difficulty cards. You have a normal, which is a scenario score of 20, and then veteran difficulty is 30. Uh, those is going to be helpful for with uh, when you're going through your campaign. That's going to help determine what kind of st score you have. And obviously veteran difficulty is a better score. You have your portal tile. Uh, so they changed that a little differently from before. So initially... What they had you do is you, you went through the portal crawl and then you had to go and try to find the boss or the fallen and fight the fallen. So if you went fast enough, you may have tried to have prevented the boss from getting too powerful. Uh, but at the same time, it was, an, it was a balance between going and trying to fight the boss quickly or exploring around and trying to explore every tile. So they actually changed it. Uh, to where your one scenario is just the crawl, and then once you complete that scenario, you go and fight a boss or one of the fallen. And I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, they wanted to keep it, you know, about an hour's length per scenario, um, and I think that definitely does it for uh, for what they've done now. So now you have to go to the portal tile, and then once you've completed that and fight the level four minion, uh, you've uh, one that scenario uh four legacy packs let me know down below what you think these legacy packs are going to consist of this is my guess uh pure guess is legacy pack a is going to be more scenario cards possibly they're looking like the same uh design as the scenario cards legacy pack b is possibly more tiles uh, to keep it that much more random, uh, to see that much more. So that could be interesting. And then Legacy Pack C and D. Not, those look like loot cards and, or boss cards or what have you. And I wonder what I was thinking of. So a lot of these loot cards are either just brand new cards introduced into the game or they're leveled up cards from, say, um, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, twice as wild, so wild, not this time, what have you. But there's no cards that are level two or three for the character's specialized cards. So, so it says uh, Paladin's uh, Consecration or anything like that. So I wonder if those packs are going to introduce those or not. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what the legacy packs are. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, I'm very excited. I'm obviously not gonna spoil it um, for when I do find out, but I'm very excited to uh, see those and see what comes out of them. Uh, over here to the right, 
You have the standees. That's why I got the standees. I ended up not getting the miniatures based on the timing and uh, money that we had saved up. Uh, we didn't get the standees. And then I saw, I just like checked in my pledge. We didn't get the sleeves either. Pretty bummed about that. Uh, if you got all the sleeves, I just counted up. It would be about 90 bucks uh, to get all the sleeves for all your different characters. Um, maybe if they decide to do another Kickstarter or whatnot, they put that at, those add-ons on. Uh, we'll probably get it. Uh, we'll save up more money for that. Uh, but just wasn't able to this time, unfortunately. You have your different minion cards. 17 level 1 and 2s. So you're going to have a lot of different minions to fight. And then 13 for level 3 and 5 for level 4. So I wonder, instead of scenario cards, it could be more minion cards too uh, for that Legacy Pack A. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. You have Rosella, your shopkeeper. Uh, this looks fantastic. Uh, there's a little bit of story that you can read about her as well. You have your tr uh, token tray. Very excited to see that. So in that tray in the top left, you have those uh, three token shards that you will find through the crawls. And then you can put it on that portal tile um, to try to end that crawl. You have your first strike tokens. So that means not only do... Uh, you have first strike printed on those minions. Apparently there's abilities possibly that someone can gain first strike. So there's that possibility as well. It's just interesting. Oh, uh, you have your different CP tokens, double-sided, along with your loot chest, double-sided. So make sure if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm out of, or I don't have any rares. Well, check the other side. They, they may be on the other side. Uh, you have your flights, stuns. Uh, your King's Hand tokens, uh, very interesting. And I like I like the King's Hand tokens. If you're not familiar with what they do, is they help the opponents, minions, or the fallen bosses uh, try to get another offensive roll phase if they fail, uh, which which helps them because whiffing is huge in this game. You do not want to whiff if you can help it. So they're going to spend that also. They're going to try to prevent ultimates from happening against them by using that uh, token once a turn. And then if they have a successful roll, which may be four through six, they roll four through six, they get to force uh, your hero to re-roll one of your sixes. So pretty interesting mechanic of that. I like, I like that quite a bit. And we'll get more into the status effects tokens here. Uh, the new ones that I'm seeing here is the Barbed Vine. Uh, that's the So that's going to be with the Trent, which is Treant or Trent. I, I call it Trent. Uh, so I like the tactic there. Of, uh, well, we'll see what we can get into it later here of what they do. But I'm just looking at what the new ones are here. Uh, Parasite, which is a pretty nasty ability. Eleven King's Hand, Hexes, which is a horrible ability to have on you. Uh, dominance, when I first saw this, I saw these Dominance tokens, I believe, on a video. Uh, one of the open box videos, maybe. And I saw those, and it looked like a puppet. Uh, you know, puppet strings. And I'm like, oh, that's got to be something with the King's Hand, or with the, the Mad King. You know, he's going to force you to attack someone else. And then I read what it does. I'm like, ah, yep, that's that's pretty much what it does. So it's pretty nasty ability. Uh, the life siphons and the silences also pretty nasty. The silences uh, keep you from rolling those straights, so you can see they're crossing out those straights. Uh, overall, pretty exciting. Oh, and then the chaos tokens as well. We have your loot dice, and then we also have our Three Fallen, which is the Fallen Barbarian. Behind him is the Fallen Gunslinger. Behind him is the Fallen Monk. And then you have the Mad King himself. And just looking a little closer at these, you can kind of look, you can look at the Fallen Barbarian, what he does. 
so just a basic smackdown, but if he rolls all slashes, he deals 9 damage, which is uh, horrendous. Uh, that's a lot of damage for, for just quote-unquote, you know, uh, basic, basic attack. But if we look at the Mad King in the very back, you can see his four top attacks, which is the Punish, Ridicule, Trifle, and Manacle. So under Ridicule, uh, inflict, uh, it looks like the, uh, the Puppet one, Dominance, I'm sorry. Uh, infl inflict Dominance. So if he rolls four of the same of that uh, die, uh, I think it's chaos. I'm not sure of what it's called again. Uh, inflict that. Trifle inflicts parasite, and then manacle gains life siphon and stacks to two, I believe. So we'll check out those a little bit, but that's what the Mad King does for the top to some degree. Just a little knowledge there. Uh, heroes and previous knowledge required to play this game. Each player will require a hero from any season of Dice Throne. Knowledge of the normal rules of Dice Throne is assumed in this manual, so you must have played at least one standard game of Dice Throne before you can play Dice Throne Adventures. Uh, if you don't, uh, please don't continue unless you have. See dice rule, uh, rules.dicethrone.com. Uh, that's also a living document. So... Always check those for the most updated because actually I have uh, season one and then I also have season two, but I believe it's 2.0 and the most updated is 2.2 now, I believe, as of September 1st, 2020. So just be aware of that. Uh, keep on the lookout. Always good to have downloaded or uploaded into um, your iPad or phone or what have you if you have that ability. So it tells you how to set up the campaign, what to do, what not to, how to follow it, what each say. Uh, really nice, very colorful. It's going to be very easy to read overall, so just keep minds of all that. And then it talks more about the portal crawl, how you can move, explore, spending yourselves. Uh, which is very important and crucial to time that. So if we screw in, in a little bit on it, uh, you can only be used before you move, when it's your turn, before you move, and then before a battle begins, even if the minion has first strike, and then before your upkeep phase, which is your very first phase when it's your turn. Uh, Salves are unique status effects, so what's... What status effects, anything like that, can't erase them. Um, can't be removed or transferred. So you can't use transference to take your salve and place it on another hero. You, It's yours and yours only. Um, however, saying that, you can spend your salve to revive a fallen teammate to one health. Uh, but can't be used to revive yourself. So just be mindful of that. Uh, try to remember that as you play it through. Telling you how to set it up, building the map, your objective of the game is right there. And then who's going to go first? So that last portal uh, that puts all three shards on there, that's always going to be a level four, it looks like. That's guarding the portal to the fallen uh, boss. And then we have the minion battles. So right there we have a Raging Berserker, which is a level 4 monster. So his reward is a level 4 chest. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later about the loot card stuff. Uh, roll Objective. Really awesome mechanic as well. Is That is what they want to roll. Is They're trying to roll this. This is what they want. And so if they roll that, that's what they're going to get. But if they fail, so for him, passive... On a failed offensive roll, gain chaos. So he's still going to get something positive even if he fails. And then they even tell you how to keep, what to keep if you want straights. So usually if you have, if you're going for straights, you're going to keep those middle numbers, two through five, and re-rolls those ones and sixes. Uh, unless you have three, four, five, six, because that's a straight right there. And then you're rolling uh, for that too. 
Uh, you, you won't keep doubles or anything like that. So, really awesome. Put a lot of time in this, as you can tell. And really, just the extra artwork. I mean, look at that. That's awesome. That is awesome. Creepy, but awesome. So, fantastic job. So the King's Hand, it's gonna, this is going to tell you the starting tokens. Uh, so start from left to right, from one player up to four players. Uh, max tokens used to turn is one, so they can't continuously keep on using it. So really awesome overall. And then... Once you successfully completed a, a portal crawl, you're going to go into your boss battles. Now, they don't want you to read this. Only pages 10 and 11. You can go beyond that because there is stuff beyond that. But pages 11, don't, don't uh, bother reading this until you get to it. The reason why is because it's a whole different kind of setup and rules to remember. And don't worry about that right now. The, the main thing for scenario one is the portal crawl. But once you get into this point, uh, they have another laid out exactly how to do it. Uh, separate the action deck and the upgrade deck for the boss. And you're going to be drawing from the update upgrade deck to start out with. Once you're done upgrading it with the CP, CP is dependent on the upgrade CP on the boss battle. So the Fallen Barbarian. Uh, upgrades, if you have four players, starts with 10 CP. Um, tells you what happens upon defeat and victory, and how many starting token, uh, King's Hand tokens they start with. They even have a boss battle turn order card, just like you would have your own turn order card. Again, what to keep, how to keep it. So for this, the bottom one, going for straights, uh, two, four, five, you keep, and not the six, even though you only need a three. The reason why is because you get uh, more of a chance rolling the one and the six for a three than just the one for a three, and they want that, that straight as much as possible. Uh, remember here, the boss fails to activate an ability on its turn. They will spend one or more King's Hand tokens in attempt to start uh, another offensive roll phase. See King's Hand, page 9. So that's interesting. So here it says they will spend one or more King's Hand tokens to attempt to start another offensive roll phase. See page 9. Uh, so page 9 here. We go back to it. Uh... King's Hand, use the potential battle saving comebacks by bosses, powerful minions displaying King's Hand symbols. Spending King's Hand tokens not optional. Some minions start with one. Starting tokens. So here it says max tokens used per turn is one. How many King's Hand tokens the boss minion can spend in a single turn? Okay. Uh, starting tokens, number of king's hands the token boss begins with. Max token spent per turn is one. So the boss right here, max tokens used is one for the barbarian, but it may be different for the gunslinger and may be different for the monk. So just be mindful of that it may not always be one. So just be mindful of that. End of battle. Whoops, lost everything here. And then we go back. So when you're going through your portal uh, crawl for the first time, you're gonna skip those two pages and go to loot chest because uh, it's what everyone wants is that loot. So this is gonna be a very important one for you uh, for scenario conclusion, uh, gaining rewards, how you're going to score your session. During your loot uh, table, you may get uh, damage tokens, uh, modifiers, gain CP, drawing cards, gaining health, 
uh, gold, uh, which is very important. Uh, you want gold uh, so that at the end of the scenario, you can use that gold to buy different cards. Uh, you cannot use cards or abilities to re-roll or change the result, even if the card says any dice, unless the card specifically mentions the loot dice. So just be mindful of that. It has to be a loot dice um, that says that. So there is that as well. And then other game modes. Uh, or campaign score. We'll do that first. After defeating the Mad King and recording your final session, total your campaign score by adding up all the won and lost session scores. This is a great tool in comparing different campaigns of Dice Zone Adventures. Go online as well and submit it as well. Legacy. When you beat the game for the first time, you will unlock legacy content. Uh, so this is all they're going to say, which is actually really awesome. I'm, I'm really excited they're not spoiling anything about what's coming next, what could be next. I know I had guesses of what it looks like, but I could be completely wrong too. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what happens on it. We will discover on our own how we'll uh, get to those legacies. Um, boss versus many. So you can do that as well. So maybe you don't want to go up against the boss uh, right away or just in the adventures campaign, but you just want to do a, a regular boss battle. Uh, you can tell you how to do that as well. It says uh, they may spend three CP any time to gain a king's hand. Stack them to five. That is a lot of king's hand. <laughs> so... Uh, Targeting phase, everything else like that. Uh, boss versus boss mode. So that's even awesome. So you go oh, Fallen Barbarian versus Fallen Monk if you want. And some good Q&As as well. And then some icons. Um, glossaries as well. How to load the card caddy. And then status effects. So let's go to dominance here first. Um, so a player with this token uh, attacks. They roll a die on a one. They must choose a teammate to target instead. If they cannot. They must discard one randomly. Uh, so that would be like for solo play. Two, five, nothing. Uh, but it still stays on you. And then six removes it. Uh, stack limit of one. And it can't be transferred. But can be removed. So pretty nasty right there. Barb Vine. Coming with the Trent as well. Uh, if you're going Trent versus Samurai, Samurai would probably be in good, pretty good position because he wants to roll less amount of times. So you'd only have to take one hit for doing a second roll. Um, damage is applied at the conclusion. Bonus damage. Stack limit of two. Chaos. Positive status effect. These tokens are gained and spent by various minions and bosses to power certain abilities. Specific minion boss ability indicates how these tokens are used. Can't be used by heroes because we don't use chaos. First strike. This token is simply a marker, not a status effect. Place this token on top of a minion and event it gains first strike from environment or other effect. So, like I was talking about earlier, that's what I figured it would be. Uh, Hex. Whenever a player afflicted with his token rolls a 6, it's as if their die had been altered to a blank die face that has no value. At the conclusion of their turn, remove the token. This token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. Stack limit of 1. And it is also a unique status effect, which is interesting. Uh... So it would be treated the same, such as um, Curse to Bloon, or... Uh, so it, it can be removed, but it's a unique, unique status effect. So I'm interested uh, why it would be unique, but you can get rid of it. Um, I guess just unique because you can't transfer it just like a regular status effect. So that would probably be why it's unique. Um, so you can't roll, you can't get straights on this. Uh, 
on a six. So you can't do two, three, four, five, six, uh, because a six doesn't exist while you have hex. King's hand, life siphon, uh, unique status effect. If your offensive roll phase results in an attack, steal a health. It's persistent, can't be transferred, but can be removed. Stack level two. Remember that the Mad King can get this. So just be mindful of that. And we'll go up here. Parasite. A negative during upkeep phase. If the player inflicted with this token has a positive size effect, they receive a damage. So that's nasty. So those that like status effects like Moon Elf, um, Monk, uh, Seraph, that's, you're going to be getting damage from that if, you, if you're not cleansing it. Additionally, if they spend a positive status effect to successfully prevent or avoid damage, uh, remove Parasite and receive 3 damage. So evasives, so you'd be receiving a lot of damage for it. Uh, so just be my, and it's undefendable damage. Your Sows, we kind of talked about a little bit already. It's an infinity stack limit, which is pretty rare. Uh, silence. A unique status effect. Player with victim this token may not activate their small or large straights. Not persistent. So just at the end of the turn, which is nice. And then you have Wither. So there you have it. Those are, that's just a little bit over the rule book, the living document of Dice Throne Adventures. Um, pretty excited to see it. Uh, let me know what you're most excited about, about Dice Throne Adventures, who you're going to use first, and what do you think about these legacy packs. Thank you and have a good day.